Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Conversations with Courageous Cancer Warriors. And today we have a really cool guest. So Beverly Zymet is an international speaker, author, a holistic practitioner, a woman who bosses up, but also she's gonna to talk to us a little bit about her new virtual real reality um, course. And I am super, super excited. Beverly, welcome. Well, Lori, thank you so much for being here. You know, just I, I am so excited. I love this world of uh, virtual reality, but I also love this world of being able to be on podcasts. I've got my own show and all that great stuff. And it's that interaction. It's meeting new people, people of like minds. And I think more than ever in the world today, people are really, really ready to find that worry within themselves and that power again to take charge of their lives because everything in 2020 has been turned upside down, inside out, and you name it. And it's time to say, whoa, Houston, hello, what is going on here? And find yourself, you know, and your true identity. And that's kind of what got me on my journey and back in 1974 so that was a long time ago probably a long time before some of these you know people that are watching were even on the planet but it was that identity and uh, finding that and that is the true soul of who you are mm -hmm. and how to maintain that energy and that high level I've always had that but throughout my childhood there was bouts of depression and stuff mm -hmm. and when I when I got married I had you know I had three kids back to back bing 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 yeah. And it just put me in a world when it's like, this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not going to follow my mom's footsteps. She had 11 of us. And it's like, life has got to change. This is not where I want to be. And, and, then, and your catalyst came from ultimately, like you had, you got married, you had kids and you, you felt something wasn't, it wasn't the way that you wanted it to go. However, you then and, ended up getting diagnosed, Right. No, no, I never had any diagnosis other you than didn't? myself. No, this was back in the 70s and I was in Iowa. And if you went to a shrink, there was now you really had a stigma, right? It was, it wasn't a good thing, but I kind of went into myself. But I thought you, you, you and I had talked offline and I just want to make sure that my thinking is right. Yeah. Didn't you say that you had found a lump in your breast and that. Oh it, gosh, that was in the 80s. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, that was in the eighties. That was <laughs> yeah, but let's, talk, let's yeah. talk a little bit about that because you had mentioned through um, holistic methodologies, which right. at that time weren't as prevalent as they are now. And I really love that right. the shift is happening. Oh, me too. Are talking about it. Right. Yeah. Um, that you never went in for surgical intervention. You didn't go in for treatment. Is that right? Am I thinking yes. of that right? Yes. So when that happened a little bit yeah. about that. Well, it was, it was hormonal related, obviously, you know, that's a lot of things that happened. And that was, uh, I think around must've been 85, 86, something like that. And, um, there's just so much, so many things going on. I mean, people will just look at me and I was in tears and I'm like, I didn't know what was going on. And I talked to my chiropractor because we had a really close connection. And actually he's mm -hmm. one that, that was part of my journey when I first moved to Denver in 79 uh, to help me understand some of the, the psychic work that I was doing, the intuitiveness. Right. And so in the sandpaper business, I was hauling and lifting a lot of heavy stuff. So I'd go in and get an overhaul, you know, at least, at least once a month or twice a month. And so all of this stuff was happening to my body. I didn't know what was going on. And, you know, he said, why don't you, you know, why don't you go see a gynecologist and see what, you know, just to try to, you know, on another side of it. And I said, I don't even have one. Cause the last time I had been there was when my daughter was born and mm -hmm. that was a long time ago then. And so, he gave me his wife's and I went and that's when they discovered fibroid tumors and they found a tumor in my breast and he's telling me all these crazy things, you know, don't eat this, don't do this, don't do that, blah, blah, blah. And uh, told me that, you know, come back, you know, in a month and then we'll see what we'll do with it. See if it's growing and blah, blah, blah. And then we'll take it out or we'll do whatever. It's like, I uh, know at this point in my life now I had been really into energy healing work yeah. in the alternatives big time. And, yeah. um, you know, so having that intuition, that mind, that mindset, and I think this is really critical for, for everyone is to, 
you know, where you, where's your mind, not your brain, your mind, because that's that divine connection. And it moves you into the different levels of thought processing. You've got your conscious, your, your subconscious and your higher consciousness. And that higher consciousness realm is where all these like, miracle things happen the spontaneous healings and that type of thing Mm -hmm. and I had been using a lot of those practices and I had also you know at that point even with my sandpaper business had been working with clients off and on to help them move beyond you know certain things and emotional upsets and and emotions are attached to everything yeah so when I found that out yeah and, and and I freaked because I didn't I didn't have the medical understanding of it. You know, what is a fibroid tumor? Yeah, you know I mean, you yeah. hear that word tumor and you're like, why? <laughs> you, know, yeah. you just blow up. Yeah. And so I called my, my sister-in-law and um, met up with her and we just, we took a drive and um, she goes, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, I'm crying and everything's crazy. And I told her what's going on. I said, what are fibroid tumors, right? Because I knew she had that yeah. connection to the medical. And she told me, it's like, oh, that's it? <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're relieved in one sense because, you know, fortunately they weren't malignant. It's a, it was a benign tumor for you. But, and then at what point did you realize, like, I have to start doing the work for myself? Like, when did you internalize it and really just start? It was right there. It was for you. It was, it was right there at that moment. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was pretty good about taking care of myself, you know, as much as, you know, when you got three kids running yeah. around a business and everything, you know, it was like, okay, because again, that was my biggest struggle was that emotional stuff. You know, even when I started at my, my depression journey to move through that and to find my identity, it was still all around emotions. Right. Yeah. And when you look at the breast, the emotions there are the lack of nurturing, the lack of nourishment, you know, and it has to do with your thought process as well. Mm -hmm. But when you have 11 kids, right, it's like, you know, I'm second oldest and we lived on a farm and there was always something to do. So you didn't get that, that nurturing, like maybe you felt you needed, you know, for whatever reason. And so, and plus two, uh, I'm sorry to no, go ahead. Interject, but plus two, like my parents are um, from Italy, right? Their upbringing was very different than our upbringing today. So I really sure. can resonate with that because we're a very loving family, but we're not one to express it verbally. It's more through action, right? So it's like right. one of those things that you need to really pay attention it, you have to, you know, our love, love languages are all so different that oh, it's sometimes, they are. They sometimes are. you feel like you're not being cared for where they're just expressing it in a different way. Right. So I, I love what you're saying about that. And when you, so you had this realization, you realize like, look, I need to take even more care of myself. And then it brought you down a journey where you ended up, um, really like grabbing a van, right? You grabbed a van and you hit the road at some point once your kids were taken care of and they were older, right? At 45. (laughs) I love it. And now mind you, um, so you are, you're older than 45 and you were I actually turned 75 last week or 71 last week, not 75, 71 last week, but that's okay. And you are one of the most vibrant people that I know on this planet. So my question to you is, how do you stay so engaged in life and so vibrant? Like you've had stuff happen. You've had, you've like everyone else, you've had some trauma in your life. You've had some health scares. You've had stuff you had to handle. Yet you are here at 71 when most people are just like, I'm not leaving my house. I'm going to watch TV. (laughs) right? Like you are still like, you still have a van and you're traveling the country. Like if COVID wasn't happening, you'd be on the road. Yes, what, would. what's your secret? What, what's your mindset? Like, what does that look like for you? Well, it, you know, if you, you go back into that moment where, where that, that tumor happened. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that was another inside with myself because I had, you know, I had really squelched my feminine side. You know, yeah. we have a feminine and masculine and it's, it's, and I'm all about harmony and bringing that mm-hmm. harmony together, right? And so I took that journey inside of me is why did I create this? Why did I create these tumors? And why did I do this, right? And get down to the nuts and bolts of what that was to, to get that out of there. And, you know, once I detached from the emotional, you know, um, 
initiation that created those and manifested them into that into that um, solid mass, they went away. I went yeah. back that next that next month because I told him they'd be gone, right? And he's like, "Uh huh, yeah, sure, right." <laughs> you know, yeah. but it, it, they were gone. You know, and he couldn't explain it, and it's like, well, it's because I said they would be, right? Yeah. And again, it's that it's that belief. I'm 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 high energy. I've always been high energy, right? But the more the more you are in gratitude, and the more yeah. that you are in love, and the more that you're looking for that inner peace. When you find that inner peace, that that trust that belief within who you are mm. you know it there, nothing can stop you you're totally unstoppable you know fear I, I never really I never really had fear in my life right and and again yeah. fear is something that's taught right and, and I'm a risk taker I'm a daredevil I mean I jump out of airplanes you name it it doesn't matter I love it but I do have a, I did have a parachute right <laughs> but I, I, yeah that you know, was good and you know so it's try everything if you're not living you're dying i love that i right? love that yes yes it's so true and especially when people are faced with their mortality like you are when you're diagnosed with cancer or a chronic illness or something right. where you're just like this is can turn into something really bad right um it's really hard to keep that perspective well it is you if, you know and and I'm all about, you know, emotions are emotions. It's not shut those emotions off. Because mm -hmm. when you shut them off, then they just kind of unconsciously eat away inside of you. And that's what cancers are, is what is eating away at you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so when you face the emotional aspect of it, and, and don't deny yourself to feel it. You know, um, when my anger came out back in, in 74, when I started my journey, you know, I yelled and screamed so much that I was my, my physical body was in total exhaustion, but I had so much, you know, and that kind of taught me a lot about emotions and getting that release, you know, so when you understand and you look at what that emotion is, you have a positive charge and a negative charge. That doesn't mean it's a good or bad or right or wrong. You know, they're just charges, energy charges. And so fear is kind of built on a negative charge. Well, if you allow that fear to stand on top of your dreams, your, your positive outcomes and, and what you're looking to have, it will drive them this way, out of sight and into the abyss. And that's when we get down in the anxieties and the major depressions and the PTSDs and all the, you know, uncomfortableness and the body dysfunctions, all of that. But if you take that same fear and that negative charge and you use it as your power force and you put it underneath of what the outcome is that you want, it will drive it this way. So you stand in the midst of that fear and you grab it by the horns and you say, uh-uh, I created you. You are now going to be my driving force upwards, not downwards. You know, I love and so that. It's, it's I switch, love that. Switching that mindset. Yeah, it's switching gears, right? It's like using using the fear to propel you forward, right? Yes. Like we yes. talk about that all the time on here is use the pain and have it propel you forward to whatever it is that you want right. to accomplish. You, you want to get healthier, get healthier. You want to change your life and go live in a van like I want to do. Make sure oh my gosh, right? I'll tell you, you know, you just jump <laughs> in that thing and you're off and running. I, you know, I've traveled all over the United States. I've been in Canada all over. I love um, it. You know, gone to different countries and it, it's a freedom, but the freedom starts in here, you yeah. know, and, and the work that I, the work that I do to help people get through that. And I, I've got shortcuts like there's no tomorrow. I didn't have them when I started, but I think that's part of the journey. Yeah. To have to have that experience to be able to share how you made it through that experience. Now, if you want to experience all that nasty crap, be my guest. And I'm telling you, it's a lot easier to get rid of it. And and I and I do walk my talk. Yeah. Right. I and and that's something well, that's that clear. is relevant. Yeah. <laughs> that's clear. It, it it oozes from from you, right? You can't be in your presence and not recognize that you stand behind what you what you say and you practice it for sure. Right. Now, during, um, I would love to ask you what was, what was the thing that made a difference for you? Like outside of you recognizing you needed to re 
align your energies and your focus and all that. Was there something that might have surprised you where you're like, oh, I didn't realize I needed this? Oh, gosh. Um, hmm. That's that's a really good question. Um, I would say I would say probably that had to come early in my journey because I was in denial with a lot of things. And I think we all are there. We you all know, we, are. Yeah. We, when, when you reach that, when you reach that, that bottom, you know, and you're slam dunked and it's like, all of a sudden, you know, you're in denial of it because you, it's like, how, how could this happen? You know, what, what the heck took place? I, I was this, you know, this vibrant person running all over the place. And all of a yeah. sudden here, I find myself like, what is going on? And right. again, that's part of that identity loss. Like, where did I go? That's yeah. not me. Right. And so those aha moments wake up right. and then, and then to really do that soul searching and listen, oh my goodness, listen to your intuition, listen to yeah. what that gut's telling you, you know, because, you know, what, what I was taught as a child, you know, if you're hearing voices, that means you're going crazy. Well, you know what, I'm going to tell you, if you're hearing voices, hallelujah, start paying attention because they're the ones that are, you know, that voice is your higher consciousness saying, Hello, Houston, you better wake up. Well, that happened to me. I think we spoke about it before where, you know, my primary care physician told me I didn't need to go and get screened until I was 45 when I was 41 because they had changed the guidelines. Right. Yeah. Right. And then and then my my subconscious literally gave me a dream or my angels. I don't know which, but I think both. And I had that dream where I was like, I need to go and get this. And if I did not go at that time to right. get my baseline, I would not be sitting here with you today. I am clear on that. So clear on it. So you really do need to listen. To yeah. It, 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 seriously, pay attention. And, mm -hmm. and, and that was part of that surrender when, because I had exhausted myself, you know, and I surrendered and say, okay, I, I am in the, in this alone, but I don't want to be alone. Yeah. And I think a, a lot of us have that, you know, why do we feel alone? Why are we afraid to reach out for help? You know, and, you know, there, back in the seventies, there wasn't the spiritual connections and there wasn't the, the helping other than just going to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And that's kind of where I always wanted to be in my life. Well, thank goodness spirit kept me away from it, put me in the, the alternative direction. But again, that was part of my journey to, to get to that point, you know, and go through these experiences myself, you know, so, so being in that denial and in that always having to prove, you know, that, Hey, I, I was better than everybody else. I was stronger. You know, that's not true. That's not truth. Well, you know what you tell yourself all these lies that gets stuck in that subconscious, you know, and that emotional stuff. And why is it we always think, you know, when we had that automatic response, we want to go after somebody's juggler, right? Or, you know, we, we repeat these patterns. We, you know, it's that recognizing, and that's why I put together a little formula that, and I, and I can share this with, with the audience too, they can get a copy of it, is what I call the Rara Report. Because it's five steps in 60 seconds, you can start to eliminate these old habits and make yourself stronger, clean up these emotional charges that are driving you, you know, to the point of no return. And, and they're all lies. And 95% of everything that is running on autopilot isn't even yours. You know, so, so true. Yeah, so true. And so where can people find that report that you have available? Um, it's the raw raw report is, is first thing you do is you recognize there's an issue. You acknowledge that it's your truth and then you release it. You surrender to the circumstances because then you can change it mm -hmm. and then you replace it with the new belief, you know, and, and taking your power back. And then you you accept that and they can get that report at bit.ly. So that's bit.ly bit.ly forward slash all uppercase R A R R A. Simple enough. I love it. Yeah. Now, um, you know, that's a good segue on how can people find you? Oh, gosh, I, I'm all <laughs> over social media, right? And and I do have my own show. It's the Beverly Zymet show. But if you put Beverly Zymet in, you're pretty much going to discover me. And, uh, you know, so I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. 
Pinterest. I'm going to be getting better on, on Pinterest and YouTube and, and really, you know, make those a, a heavy force as well. But probably Facebook is the best way to get me and just use my name out there. And um, you have you have a show like you yes. mentioned, you have your own show that in which you have guests and now you are going down this virtual reality Right. Show, right. You're going to have two of them. Do you want to take a brief moment to tell us a little bit about your virtual reality show? Yeah, that would be great. Virtual reality is a world of avatars. And a lot of people don't understand that because if, if you look what goes on in the world, you know, the gaming industry is like hot. I mean, it's billions of dollar industry. And people relate to the mind relates to the cartoon character for the simple fact that it says, OK, if that cartoon character can take this situation and make it better. Well, then so can I. And and that's how the brain functions with the information from from the mind. And in and in in our movies, everything is animated, animated. Look at the storybooks, children's stories, fairy tales. It's all done with either animals or different creatures, maybe the trees talk, you know, the houses talk, all of these pieces and parts communicate with you. And they do communicate with you when you listen in the real world. And the virtual reality aspect of it has really brought that out. And when you move yourself into your avatar form, because this is an avatar, and it's in this illusionary world we call the planet Earth. But when you work in virtual reality and you step into that other avatar, it's like all your inhibitions go away and you are immersed onto a platform and what you're viewing is real. And it, it takes you out of conscious reality, puts you into your higher conscious levels of alpha and theta where things happen and change happens really, really fast. And the mental health institutions know this and understand it. And they started creating, you know, um, different uh, um, programs that they're using virtual reality for. And so what we've done is we take the game out of gaming, left the fun, and put in business, put in education, and put in um, entertainment, you know, to help. Again, now we look at the segregation, the separateness that's going on here in 2020. When you're immersed on the platform, because you have an avatar right next to another avatar. It brings back normalcy and the, the brain says, oh, hi, somebody's here. Talk to me. OK, you know, and so you're you're connecting now. So the technology that started segregating us, you know, because everyone was on their phones or their, you know, instruments of whatever, all of a sudden now are bringing us back together. And Zooms are great, but we still get the fatigue because of the static, um, you know, dimensional stuff with the, where the brain and the eye, the camera, the eye is trying to bring everybody together. And so it, there is uh, fight flight mechanisms that continuously kick in on a Zoom that don't kick in when you're immersed into the platform. And so I'm going to do a show in there. It's called The Phenomenon. And I'm looking for people that want to be a part of that. And when you really understand how you can take business into the virtual reality because it's where it's going it's it's not going away virtual reality isn't going away it's only going to get greater and greater and greater and now's the time you know to be that warrior that pioneer that says hey i'm going to live this to its fullest let me get in there let me see what this other world is all about and really begin to expand and communicate because it's changing businesses and it's changing lives. That's and amazing. That's, that's what it's, you know, that's what it's all about, right? That's amazing. I can't wait to see where this goes and I can't wait to get involved. And, you know, you truly are a blessing to this world. And thank you for, you know, all of everything that you do from, you know, back in the day when you were fixing cars to now going <laughs> and, and creating, you know, these, these, the opportunity for people to be on the same playing field right without any exactly any, yeah because yeah. the inhibitions go away they really yeah. do the fears go away without any judgments really you can get on you can oh i this is i gotta share this this is so amazing i've watched people come in there they're speakers and they're scared 
they're just scared out of their wits, right, to be on that stage. And they come into the virtual reality and they get on that stage. And now it's an international stage, so you automatically become an international speaker. They're on that stage giving the talk of their life because it's coming through their avatar. And, and there's no fear of being judged. There's no fear of, you know, how's my hair look or do I have the right colors? You know, is my, you know, is my dress okay? Is my, you know, whatever, you know, all that brain chatter is gone and they are just speaking from their heart. It's so amazing. But if people, if people want to watch a demo on what we do, you know, and be a part of that, just because seeing is believing it in this case, yeah. um, it's another bit.ly link. It's a B-I-T dot ly forward slash um virtual reality demo virtual reality yeah. demo and you know hey, i love it i, I love it i i can't wait to, <laughs> i can't wait to watch i can't wait to be a part of it i think it's it's going to be absolutely amazing so yeah. thank you so much for sharing yourself with us today like it's truly been an honor well, it's uh, it was a pleasure being here, Lori, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and keep up the good work of what you're doing and exposing, you know, different things out there. And you know what? Go out there, everyone, and live. Be that best you. That's my show's motto. Be the best you that you can be. And yeah. every day when you improve on that, your energy is going to go up and up and up and up and up. And the universe has an abundance of energy. So grab onto it and take a ride. I love it. It's- amazing way to say see you soon see you soon